All right, we was off camera. You were talking about, uh, I asked you about doing Joe Rogan. You said you were the, one of the first Joe Rogan interviews. How many times have you done the Joe Rogan show? Twice. You say you were like number 80 or something. Yeah, I, something like that. I was right in that number. I might have been a, a, a little earlier than that, maybe even. So I go on Joe Rogan's show, oh, right? And uh, I'm, I'm fucked, fucked up, up at the time. time. You know what I'm saying? saying? That just, just took mom's house. house. You, you can see, see my documentary, documentary when they, they put, put us out. out, out, out yeah, yeah, yeah. They just put us out the house and... I go, I go do the Joe Rogan, Rogan show, show, but you know, I'm, I'm winning it with, with, you know, like, fuck it. I, 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 when I left prison, I was already like, shit, whatever, whatever I gotta do. If I'm homeless, sleeping in a car, I'm a kid, I'm a win. You know, like, I'm, I'm just a motherfucker billionaire sleeping in a car. So when I go to the Joe Rogan show, I was like, man, Joe, I'm fucked up. And he was like, man, you need a T-shirt. And I was putting my hand on the table, like, oh, a T-shirt, man, give me some money. I need a, I need a boost, so. I, I do the show, man. I'm walking, walking downtown, downtown and uh, this young white kid come, come up to me and he's like, hey, Rick, I heard you on Joe Rogan show. He all geeked and shit like that. I'm like, oh, man. He's, he's like, man, I got an idea for a T-shirt. And I was like, oh, another one of them motherfuckers, right? And uh, he said, the real Rick Ross is not a rapper. And I said to myself, that's the corny shit in the world. But I always, one thing I notice about me is I keep open mind. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I might feel like a certain way, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, just say, like, my way is the only way. So I said, uh, all right, let's do it. The dude said, I'll print the T-shirt, I'll design everything. I don't know this kid either, right? So he designed a T-shirt. I come to a shop. We take some pictures with me wearing a shirt. Mm -hmm. He give me a hundred shirts. I buy I sell those shirts that same day. Wow. So, so at this time, time I got Joe's direct, direct number. number. I can call Joe whenever I get ready. Yeah. So, so I called Joe. Joe. I was like, hey, man, you know, you told me to do that T-shirt. Well, I did. I got a T-shirt. He's like, all right, I'm going to set you up to come back on the show. So next week I go back on the show. And I take Joe on the T-shirts. Because uh, I, I was doing really nice material, you know, the new T-shirts. So I gave Joe the shirt. Joe put the shirt on the camera. And, and next week, me on PayPal, I hit like $18,000. Like, bing, bing, bing. That thing just came on. Bing, 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 bing. We, we thought, thought it was broke. broke. <laughs> $18,000 was in my PayPal, man. We went and got us a part, man. I ain't looked back since. So what up, YouTube family? Welcome to From Indicted to Invited. Go ahead and hit that like button. I just played y'all a video. That's the real Rick Ross. The original Snowfall. And I thought that that intro was perfect in assessing what today's video is about. Money dummies. Drug dealing money dummies, right? And I, uh, it would be something that most people in my condition, in my situation, will never get over. I'd be on the phone with 53, Jay Smooth, a lot of my friends. We all look back and, and realize we didn't do what we supposed to do with the money once we touched it. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I ain't going to say that, but it's an opportunity to get to a level of like financial literacy that that in financial consciousness that that way you can you could have set ourselves up for the rest of our lives with the money that we had you know what i mean there's a lot of people who in the streets and this video is really for the people who who still dipping and dabbing and, and looking for a way and you heard ricky ross say he was just a billionaire sleeping in the car See, guys like him, they can't do nothing else, ever. Ever. You know what I mean? They really look like anything he do, they really looking to, to put him back in there for the rest of his life. Already 64 years old, so he, he can't stay in another one. So you understand when he say he's just a billionaire sleeping in his car because he could sleep up on the, up the bridge. He'd rather do that because there's nothing, any sniff or anything illegal, you know what I mean? Somebody would love to, uh, you're talking about a get out of jail free card. Oh, I got this from Ricky Raw. What? Come on, man. 
Come on, man. So anyway, to get back on topic, let me show y'all this picture right here. This picture right here is uh, the show I did when I brought Jaheen to Cleveland, right? You see that coat I got on right there, that, that patchwork shielding, right? $3,000. Shout out to Michael Wilson, my designer back then. $3,000. Right? Just blowing through money, like, and, you know, and the fashion thing was my biggest downfall. My biggest downfall. Like, I only have to get into all the designer pieces. Like, everything I wore every day was, was, was I'm the only one headed. What I'm the only one headed. You know what I mean? So all different kinds of designers doing my clothes. I'm talking about my everyday clothes was custom. And that's where a lot of my money went. It was a disease. And I'm, I'm you know, I mean, like, I was just, like, you know, I was tall. So I got the money to really, you know, to, 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 to get sharp. You know, I could be sharp around there. So I mean, so I, I, that's what I did. And that was one of my downfalls. That was one of my biggest downfalls. But uh, I wanted to uh, I wanted to really to just I want more people to know that you know we have there's a lot of people work right. Let me tell you, I can't stand having a job. I can't stand having a job. I've been filling out applications, and when I was in Nevada, uh, when I was in the halfway house, we had this thing we had to do called a scope. So that means we had to go to the, uh, the police department and, and, and pay for it and, and print off our scope where they ran our background. They show you what the employer see when they do a background check on you. So in the state of Nevada, you know, here's a picture of the scope right here. Let me put it up here. Here's a picture of my scope. And you see it says that it has no criminal history in the state of Nevada. Because they only do, like, state checks. They don't really do federal. They only go back 10 years. So by me being the kind of person who did so much time, like, more than 10 years, it, it, and nothing shows up there. So I've been putting in these job applications here, and, and I'm getting interviews and stuff like that. I'm getting to the interview stages. And, you know, now, man, you, uh, the job I really wanted, man, my background came up. And I was so shocked in it because I thought, Every state kind of did like Nevada did. Man, do you know they got the Fed, they got everything. I ain't going to put it up there to show y'all, but everything about that case is on my background. The charges, the, the gun charges, the, the time I got, all the conspiracy charges, right? It's on there. And, you know, a lot of people will tell you that it don't start. It starts when you get out. You really got to be out 10 years before those background checks go back 10 years. So a lot of people would tell you that it starts when you got arrested. So and, and, and it depends on what state you're in, right? So I, I was kind of depressed about that. Now I'm, I'm in limbo. Now the guy is saying, well, let, let, us, let me review this. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you know, I had to send him my pardon and stuff and, and the letter that I got from Obama just to kind of ease him a little bit. You know what I mean? But going through that right there, just the whole thing, and, it, and my livelihood got to be in other people's hands on hiring me. I just hate it, bro. I hate it that my life is in this situation. I hate it, bro. I hate it. I never liked working. I always wanted to have my own business. You know what I mean? So when y'all see that picture of me and, and Jaheen, that was like my first time stepping out and having my own promotion company. You know what I mean? Let me show y'all this picture right here. This is a before and after picture of me and my wife. That's 20 some years ago in Vegas. We did the helicopter ride. You see that fur, I bought that fur in Vegas. Right, this is for uh, New Year's Eve, Christmas and New Year's Eve. So doing this trip right here, I uh, the other picture decided to beat the after part, that's the night that I proposed to her. So the after part, right? The after. That after that trip and all of that stuff, man, you know I spent about seventy. Cause for Christmas I had somebody re while we was going on the trip, I had somebody remodeling her house. Then it was after nine eleven, so it was bringing in two thousand and two. So 
Man, our flights was like five thousand dollars a piece for first class. So all together, I spent about seventy, right? And I'm like, 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 bro. When I think back, when I think back on the money, right, and everything that means something to me, as far as having uh, money for my ancestors, everybody want to be that person. Like I always wanted to be the person that, when you walk into a, a, a lobby. It had my picture up there, and you know, and it had founder on it. That's my goal. And I had an opportunity, man, to step in and step out of that game. See, I tell people, man, selling drugs is more is more addictive than using drugs. Selling, I've been saying that for the longest, right? And I could have stepped out of that game, man, and with the with the with the ideas that I have now, I'm just like, man, like where where was this at? When you be in the game, see, when you be in the game, I was in there, y'all know the people I was dealing with, I couldn't really get in and get out, and it was just the whole, like, prison was my out. And as you see in the, in the video where Ricky Ross, this is Ricky Ross we talking about. This is Rick Ross we talking about. Once they get you in there, you got to go through that whole thing, man, it's a downfall, like, for your pockets and everything. If he can go broke. You know what I'm saying? Certainly I can, because I'm nothing compared to what he was, nothing. I'm nothing compared to some of the dudes in my city. You know what I'm saying? So it's everybody seems to, you know, once, once they, a lot of guys come out with nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And it's, it can be demoralizing to your spirit in the sense of, of, because you got that money disease. You're going to always have that money disease. You know what money feels like. You know what you know what it's like to have it. Uh, amenities, man. I used to travel I used to go to South Beach. I used to stay at had bungalow, poolside bungalows, eighteen hundred dollars a night back then in the early two thousands. Uh, uh, the shopping. I used to go to strip clubs and jack off five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? Just just being stupid with the money. Just a total dummy. You know what I'm saying? And now I look back and I'll be like, man, like just the opportunities that I blew. And I'm not by myself. It's a whole community community of us that, that feels this way. You know what I'm saying? You know how many times I was broke, but I say my plug gonna come through tomorrow, I can I can stack back up. You know how many how many guys have said this? How many people in the streets have, have went through this? Broke. Man, I'm going to jack this off. I'm going to go on the back. Shoot, I don't care. I'm going to get this motorcycle, man. Sure, I got to have it. You know what I'm saying? And then you just start back over tomorrow. Start back over tomorrow. You may blow, you just blow up, you just blow up from there. But you know what I'm telling People just went broke because they had a plug. I want anybody that's in the streets, anybody that's whatever you're doing, right? Sit down, take a moment, and, uh, and do something towards your future with whatever money you have. You see these people, uh, Warren Buffett and all these people pulling their money out the banks and stuff, right? It's something going down. I'm nervous about it. I'm real nervous about it. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, when, the, when the shit hit the fan and we ain't already rich, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be, the haves and have nots for real in the whole entire world, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared. So I'm trying to figure it out. And that's the thing. That's one of my problems. But I don't have the, uh, the slow grind in me. I'm thinking, I'm thinking fast money legally. I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of a patent. I'm thinking of something that I can, that I can sell, like right now, to give me some money. You know what I mean? I'm gonna work a job or whatever, but it's gonna kill me. You know what I mean? I'm just not, I'm just, I'm always thinking of a way. I'm always thinking of a way because I blew my opportunity. So anybody just, just, just out there, man, you have the opportunity to do something and, and bless something and bless your life and bless your family and your kids and, your, and, your, and, and your, the whole history, the future that you got going on, man, go ahead and, and reach out in there and try to do it. Go on here out there, jump out there, bro. Just jump out there. And I know it's a lot of guys in the streets, man, that, that feel like they can't they can't step out right now. Just give me another six months, 
give me another year, you might not have that. You might not have that. I, I had that promotion company and I was doing good with it, but I was already arrested. You see what I'm saying? Like, it, that makes it worse. I thought I was out and they reached back in and snatched me. They reached back in and snatched me. You know what I'm saying? So I need anybody out there, man, that's listening, man, if you got some motherfucking money, you got an idea, man, put that shit in motion. We ain't got long. We don't have a whole lot of time, man. We need to, you got to be financially secure. The world is about to change. You know what I mean? I got fear in me. You know what I mean? I see what's going on. I see this this whole digital currency thing about to be, all the paper money about to be gone. Man, you got to get rich right now. So anybody out there that's listening to me, man, please just take, take heed to what I am fucking trying to tell you. Jump out there, man, and start something. Open something. Just do anything. Uh, crypto, whatever. Day trading. Just try to fucking do something because we ain't got long. This is from Indicted to Invited.